Joining me now from Washington, Tad Devine, Bernie Sanders' top st strategist and advisor. Uh, your colleague, Jeff Weaver, saying that there is a path and saying that, there, that this is going all the way to the convention. Uh, I read a quote from you on the Associated Press last night saying that you'd reevaluate after California. Which is it? Well, I said we would assess how we're going to get to our goal, which is to have a pledged delegate lead after California. And, and listen, we lost more delegates yesterday than I hoped we would. I thought it would be closer. We're going to have to make up some more ground. But we believe we can get there, that Bernie Sanders can win more pledged delegates by the time all the voting is done, and that we can make a strong case, as Jeff was pointing out, to the superdelegates that Bernie Sanders should be the nominee of the party, that he earned the nomination, and that he'd be the strongest candidate in the general election. Given that the Democrats vote proportionally, there's no winner-take-all situation, do you have to win Pennsylvania? Do you have to win California? I mean, how do you catch up uh, We're gonna 200 have to win. plus lead that they sure. have? Well, Andrea, we're going to have to win a lot of states and a lot of delegates. You know, uh, uh, certainly those states are key targets for us. California at the end, uh, Pennsylvania next week. I think we have a good shot in Pennsylvania to win. Hillary Clinton did very well in her home state of New York yesterday and won an impressive victory. But it's not going to be her home state anymore. We're going to go to places where Bernie Sanders' message that this economy is rigged, sending all the new wealth to the top, that this corrupt system of campaign finance is holding a rigged economy in place. I think that's going to resonate all across Pennsylvania and across other states as well. Now, what about Indiana and, I mean, Washington State has not been apportioned yet, so you still have some pickups there potentially, but are the must-win states by large margins, Pennsylvania and Indiana going into California? Well, I, listen, Andrea, I think there's a lot of states that we're going to win. I think, and Jeff pointed them out last night, I think Oregon, for example, where people are going to start voting very soon, they have early voting there by mail, is a state where I think we can have an impressive victory. I think in all the states in that region, many of them don't come until June, the Dakotas, for example, where we won all the adjacent states, I think we can win. In, in New Mexico, where, we, you know, we've done better with Latino voters in some states, I think we can do well there. I, I think we can win. I think there's a lot of states ahead that we can win and a lot of delegates we can win in these states. So we're just going to keep focus on the task at hand. You know, the New York Times had a very, I think, powerful editorial today pointing out why it's so important that Bernie Sanders continue to make the case to, to the voters. And he's energizing the party. I think we saw it yesterday in the exit polls. Two-thirds of the Democrats said that this campaign was energizing the party. And by the way, uh, a plurality of voters, 46 percent, said the Clinton campaign was the campaign that was being you know, the one that was uh, uh, really making a negative case, you know, uh, and, and, and that's in a state that she won overwhelmingly. So, so I think they should take a step back and maybe restrain some of the rhetoric that we heard from this, some of the spokespeople last night. Let's have a debate on the issues, the real issues, like college education, like health care for all, like how we're going to take on climate change, whether we should have a carbon tax. That's the debate Bernie Sanders wants, and I hope we get it from Hillary Clinton. Only 14 percent of those in the exit polls said that they definitely would not vote for her, which is a fairly low number. Uh, 65 percent said they definitely would, and you had 20 percent say they probably would vote for her. So she's got a lot of support even among some Sanders supporters. In addition, uh, she won across all groups. I mean, she didn't win the young people, but other than that, from black people, older people, women, she, she had a really broad-based victory. She did, but it was an electorate that didn't allow independents to participate, a group where she has not done very well, uh, a group from uh, New Hampshire well, to Wisconsin, well, which cost her victories. Pennsylvania is closed, and so is Connecticut and Maryland. And you have to wait sure. till you get to Indiana, I think, before you have another open primary where you can draw from independents. It's true, but New, in New York is closed, but it's very closed. I mean, they set the deadline for independents transferring to the Democratic Party months and months ago. So, so I think we can do well in the states coming up. Some of them will be closed. Many of them, like California, will allow independents to participate, and I think we'll do better. And listen, I'm taking nothing away from Secretary Clinton's victory yesterday, but if she's going to win a general election, she's going to have to start winning independent voters, and she has not demonstrated yet any capacity to win support from independents in open primaries. How about the fact that by two to one, the voters yesterday feel that she has a better chance of defeating Donald Trump than Bernie Sanders? Well, I think they, they, they hear that from, you know, everyone who talks on television about her being ahead. You know, and it is her home state. I mean, listen, I think both Trump and, and Secretary Clinton did well in their home states. They, they didn't do as well as Bernie Sanders did with 86% in Vermont, but they did well. And, uh, you know, we, we recognize that. But I think as we move through this process, we believe we can win a pledged delegate victory. We believe his message 
message is powerful, more powerful than hers. We think we can pull the Democratic Party together, particularly around this issue of whether or not it has to continue to rely on special interest funding for campaigns. So that's what we're going to talk about. And when all the voting is done, we'll, we'll see where we are. And that's when we'll decide the course that we need to take. And and Tad, very briefly, will there be any toning down of the rhetoric in acknowledgement of her fairly commanding lead? Well, Andrea, I hope they tone it down. And judging by what Jen did last night, I don't no, know if they you're, will. You're I mean, they toning, just... the toning down of the Sanders <laughs> well. rhetoric. Well, I th I, you know, listen, I mean, a, a lot of this is in response to the incoming. You know, they just launched a gun ad on us in Connecticut and Rhode Island. Okay, so, I mean, you know, you, you know, the, the, the left hand doesn't seem to know what the right hand is doing at the Clinton campaign. If they're going to attack us, we're going to have to respond. I hope we can have a debate on the issues. Bernie would prefer that, and I think Democrats would as well. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.